So you have an E-Tech that will not run. I know there's not a lot of videos of E-Techs out there, especially the larger E-Techs, like in the three cylinder and up ranges, especially on what to do if they're not running correctly. I recently purchased this Evinrude E-Tech 90, I think it's the 2006 on Facebook Marketplace and had a ton of issues trying to get it running. And due to the lack of information out there, I really struggled to figure out anything really on it. It took a couple months, but I finally figured it out. And I'm going to share all the issues and how to fix everything in this video. So if that sounds good to you, be sure to stick around. So a quick overview of this engine and backstory on how all this came to be. I purchased this boat here on Facebook that had a Johnson 112 on it. And the old Johnson, it just had a ton of issues. I didn't want to really want to mess with it. And I wanted to have something a little bit more modern. So I purchased this because it would plug into the original Johnson controls and use all the gauges and everything the same way as the original engine did. Now, I bought this engine and it was supposed to be good to go. The guy said it was on his boat. They took it off just to um, upgrade to a larger engine and it was great. Anyway, got it home completely dead. It would turn over, but nothing worked. So the first issue I went through was this right here. This is the EMM. It is probably the most expensive issue on the whole entire boat. Um, this is the computer, the control module, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, when I first got it, there's lights in here that you'll see if I turn the key on. These lights right here, these red lights, they're supposed to be three on with the key on not cranking if it's functioning correctly, which each of these correspond with these things. So like I said, this was completely dead. And of course you don't want to jump in and buy this computer because it's actually made it with the injector. So when you have to replace this, you also need to either get these reprogrammed to the computer, which you have to take it to the dealer for, or you can buy a used set where they come as a pair already matched, which is what I did. So I went through and checked a few things. I checked and I had absolutely no spark, which is pretty indicative of an obvious problem. I had no gas coming to it except for this mechanical fuel pump right here. And it's gonna pump whether it has electronics or not. So I came to the conclusion since this was not lighting up and it was not any of the fuses in the boat any safety things which is kind of hard to check in my opinion and i assume my wiring was right i just came to the conclusion that this was bad so i bought a new one put it on and i got spark and i was able to crank it if i pump this bulb just repeatedly like just even when it got hard still pumping and i was able to pump it all up through here fill this right here and it would run for just a second. And it actually cranked and ran that first day after I put the EMM in it for probably 25 seconds. And then it just kind of sputtered and shut off and it never would crank again without pumping that bulb, just a crazy amount. And then it finally got to a point where pumping the bulb wouldn't even get it to fire off or anything. So that made me start looking into this right here. And if your engine is an older model or it, even if it's an older model, it still might have this, but if this has never been replaced, it'll look different. I'll cut in a video showing what the original one looked like. Now, this is the original VST box here. As you can see, this thing's pretty rough. Um, it sits in there like this. This is the old version, like I said. It's cooler than the new one because you do have these Schrader valves that you can check your, your fuel pressure. There's a high pressure that sits on top of the pump right here. That's how I was able to identify that my pump was not pumping because I had zero PSI pressure. So if you're getting voltage to it and you're getting no pressure, you're either blocked or your pump is messed up. But this VST solenoid, or not solenoid, box or whatever this is, canister, um, is on your boat. You can replace it with a newer version. I think that's the only one they still make, but this is what it looks like if you have it. But this is the vapor separator. It is a canister full of gas that cycles 
water through it to cool the gas it spins it comes over here and this is an electric fuel pump inside of here if you have the original one you'll see the pump sitting off to the side it's very obvious so i came to started looking at this because i was thinking i'm not getting fuel so i went through i checked my voltage on my fuel pump right here which is easy to do it's just a positive and a negative and i checked and saw if i was getting power at the key and i was here and I also took a power probe and sent 12 volts to the positive side. And my pump, you could feel it clicking, but you couldn't really hear it doing anything. So I thought, okay, my pump's locked up. I pulled my pump off. And when I pulled it off at the bottom of the pump, it was completely full of rubber. The rubber had gotten in. It, one of these hoses had broken down over the years, pulled the rubber up to the pump and stopped it up. And when it stopped it up, it made the pump run dry, which locked it up. So after finding that, I said, okay, I need a new VST. I went on eBay. You can't find the original ones really anymore. And this is the updated model. I, this is actually from a 2013. I'm pretty sure any of them will work. The only th difference is people say that one of these hoses is different and you'll need a new one, which maybe you do to get it run 100% perfect, but this is running all the 2006 hoses and everything with this new VST. Another note, I'm using uh, hose clamps. You're not supposed to use that. You should be using these high pressure ones, but I don't. I didn't have them at the moment. So this is what I'm using for now. But one of the things with this is these engines run a uh, software, or you can run a software on these engines with a PC and you can troubleshoot a lot of different things. I could not get my software to work. So I did all this without the software. A lot of people will tell you, you have to have the software to do anything with this motor, which is not true. I did not use the software at all. It wouldn't have helped me with this anyway. I could have turned the pump on, but it wouldn't have told me anything like special about it. And really the main thing, the old pump has had no fuel pressure and I was getting power and it was stopped up and everything. I ordered this, put this on, and it took a while to get it all pumped up and full of gas and everything. But when this was installed with the new EM, it actually started running, which I'll show you now. And it's a little cold, so it's not 100% like perfect right now. It's stone cold, hadn't run it in about three days. But the longer it runs, the better it runs. But anyway, you can see now that it is running after this. So if you have an E-Tech and it has no lights on the EM, it's a 99% positive chance that the EM is no good and you should probably think about replacing it. Now, that's not to say you don't have any lights. Don't try to troubleshoot. That's not what I'm saying. You still should troubleshoot because that EEM usually is a thousand dollars. I got mine for half of that. That was pretty lucky. So definitely check your wiring and all the obvious stuff first to make sure that is not your issue. But if you can't figure out any other thing, go ahead and replace this because you can't do anything if this is not functioning. If you have a working EEM and everything else you think is working correctly, you have spark. Your engine is turning over. You have good compression. You still can't get it to run. You see this is pumping up, but you still can't get it to run unless if you're pumping it up by that. Chances are your pump is no good or either you have a stopped up something in here. First, you should be checking to make sure it's not stopped up anyway. These are old hoses now. Make sure your hoses are clear. Then you can check your fuel pump and be sure that the fuel pump's working and chances are your fuel pump is not any good and you'll replace it and it will run like it's supposed to and like i said none of this required the software that everybody on the internet will tell you you have to have to work on these it's not true if you have a basic understanding of how mechanical things work you do not need the software for at least these two issues right here if you have a crank position sensor or whatever you might need the software i'm not sure if you have to re configure something you'll need it obviously but just to troubleshoot these you don't need a uh, software if you understand the basics of mechanics um so i hope this helps somebody that's struggling with their e-tech 
become more sure of what the issue is before they spend the money on the parts because I know these parts are expensive and they're not necessarily hard to get, but they're not as easy as motors that are still made. These are great motors. If you can get them working, there's not a lot of information on them because they're not so many people who use them as a mercury or anything, but hopefully this helped you. If it did, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'm gonna try and make some more videos of this E-Tech, this boat, cleaning it up, getting it ready for next year, and maybe some new outboards in the future. If you're some of my original subscribers, I haven't uploaded a video in price, I don't know, maybe it's been six months at this point, but I've done some new things to the Forerunner, so be sure to stick around to see the updates on that. I'm sure you'll be pretty excited about that. So thanks for watching.